Welcome to Sultans of Spine. Our goal is to connect. Welcome to Sultans of Spine. I'm your host, Jamil Pendleton. Our goal is to connect you, the audience, with surgeons, leadership, and key stakeholders for this space in medical device. I'm honored and privileged to welcome our guest, Shannon Mays, District Sales Manager for Northern Florida. Shannon's been in the medical device industry for over 15 years with a number of different positions, leadership and sales. And Shannon, I'm so excited to, to talk to you about specifically your path and where you see this industry going. But before that, hey, thanks so much for carving out some time and welcome to the show. Jay, Jay, thank you so much for the opportunity, man. It's, it's awesome to see you. I, I, I hope that we can see each other in person soon. Uh, but, you know, I, I appreciate the opportunity, man. Thank you for reaching out. You bet. I, and, and I'd like that. It, yeah, I mean, I think that's happening soon, sooner than we think. If, if your May uh, is any, is any, it, it, if your travel schedule is anything close to mine, then, then it's about to pick up. And, yeah. Uh, I'm excited. For, so. for sure. For sure. You know, what, what I'd like to do is just try to take people a little bit behind the scenes, right? And, and this is one of the fastest developing spaces in medical sales with the advent of AI, data, robotics, right? All things that, that, that are prevalent in your, in your territory, in your, in your neck of the woods, so to speak. So, and one of the things that, that I feel is going to separate this podcast from all the other ones out there is that we're inside it, we're living it, breathing it, and, and it's something that is a, a hallmark of our character and who we are. Uh, but also, you know, I think one of the most important things that I've learned is the art of listening and connecting with others. And so I, just the reason for launching this after doing two podcasts as a guest, I recognize that why not connect with other in, individuals in the industry like yourself, Shannon? So just as a backdrop, of why we're here and it's it's almost like a a, a peek under the drape so to speak and inside sure. the the uh the minds of people that are that are leading charge in 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 our growing industry so a little peek under the hood right <laughs> peek under the hood a, 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 absolutely so look i'm i want to just make this more like a conversation shannon and you know similarly to 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 any of our conversations in the past just just have a discussion okay. about about you about your your thoughts on the industry, your path in 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 where we're going. So, sure. Why don't you, if you if you wouldn't mind, how did you get started in the industry? Um, maybe taking us back to and I see that you're a, you were a D1 college athlete. You played soccer, which is my favorite sport. I grew up playing, That's and right. uh, I would love to hear about that. Your path in college, and then just kind of how you started. Yeah, so it's it's interesting. I get a number of calls and people reaching out on LinkedIn and you know college students and and you know just various different people that are asking similar questions and they're on this journey uh, that I was on you know over twenty years ago. Um, but you know my path, you know especially in in college, I didn't really know what I wanted to do or what I wanted to be when I grew up. Right, um, I, I I always had a business focus. I looked at, you know, commercial real estate and, and financial services. I was sort of leaning towards that. I really didn't even understand that medical devices existed. I didn't know that that was a thing, right? You always hear about pharmaceutical sales and things like that. But um, I was introduced to medical devices um, by my, my former, this guy was my high school soccer coach. So after, um, after my senior year, um, he left teaching. He was an environmental science teacher and also coached the soccer team. Um, he left teaching and went into pharmaceutical sales and uh, worked for Pfizer. And then he eventually um, made his way to Medtronic and, and the spine division. So him and I kept in contact over the years. Um, he reached out to me. I was, um, you know, he reached out to me while I was in grad school and said, hey, um, I want you to come and take a look at what I do. Uh, I want you to check this out and, and maybe there's an opportunity for a career path for you. Now, the reason why he said this, this is a, just a nice guy. He's from, you know, Southern guy from Alabama. He told me that he went to his national sales meeting and everybody that he saw looked like him. 
right? And yes, I didn't really understand the, you know, what that meant or the complexities of that um, at the time. But he felt that there were there was a need um, to have a different perspective and some diversity in the field. For me, it was just cool. I, I want to, you know, I'll check out what you're doing because I'm looking at different job opportunities. But he felt uh, there was a higher level of impact for, for having me uh, potentially join the organization. Wow. How prophetic, yeah. right? I mean, you look at today's the landscape and, and how companies are embracing diversity. And, um, you know, I look at you and your career path and, um, you know, for me, I'm colorblind, right? You, 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 you deserve every bit of every opportunity that you, you've gotten from my perspective, Shannon. Sure. But it's also really cool to see uh, people like your old coach realizing that and, and taking the initiative to make, make a change. Yeah, it's really interesting, right? Because that was 15 years ago. And, you know, fast forward to, to today. And, you know, that's, there's still impact in, in that story. And, and kind of, you know, his decisions at the time to even invite me to the party. So um, I, you know, I interviewed with Medtronic or with him. I, I So let me back up. I actually went on that ride. Um, we we spent some time in the operating room. It's my first time in, in, in an OR. Um, as a, I don't even remember what the case was. It may have been a T-lift, but it seemed to be a very challenging, high intense case the surgeon was a challenging, um, you know, was was a challenging customer. had had some challenges during this case, and you know, this is you know during the days where there was a lot of yelling and screaming and throwing and things like that right. that would happen in the rooms that people may not be aware of, but still happens. Um, so yeah, still happens some some places. But you know, uh, after the case, you know, I I didn't eat. You know, we we didn't have time to eat. You know, I just wasn't used to that. So, but after the case, I sat back, reflected on the experience. And I said, this was awesome, right? Um, right. The surgeon really relied on, on my former high school soccer coach uh, for his expertise within the case. I thought that was really cool. Um, I also thought it was cool that he didn't have, my, my soccer coach didn't have to go to an office, right? His day was dynamic. He was in his car. We were moving, going to different hospitals. Um, so those things were really cool. And I also, um, felt that there was a higher level of impact that he was having on his career to patients and, and, and um, you know, uh, medical technology in general. So I thought that was really cool. Um, go ahead. Keep going, keep going. No, please keep going. Yeah. So, um, so then, you know, I, I was offered an opportunity to be his, what we called an associate sales rep at the time. I could not take the opportunity because I was still in school. So, uh, the hiring manager, uh, I will give him a shout out. His name's Chris Ryan. He's a, uh, one of the, you know, still a, a leader in spine, great guy. Um, he redirected me to a program called the Apex program within the organization. So um, the Apex program was basically an onboarding program um, that chose five people nationally to join the organization, do rotations throughout our spine business, learn the ins and outs of spine, um, and I was fortunate enough to be one of these folks chosen after, uh, you know, a long, long um, interviews and panel interviews and executive interviews I was chosen. Do you have any idea how many people went for those jobs? Um, I was, I was told a lot, you know, a couple hundred people. <laughs> yeah. Don't be, don't be modest, man. Congratulations yeah. on that because five out of a big number is, is, is unique. And I mean, look at you now. So, so the I fooled somebody. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. I'm still full of people now, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. if we could just pause there, you touched on two things that are so near and dear to me and how I grew my territory, which are being extremely valuable to everybody in the room, but the surgeon is happening the ship, right? And for you to see, have the acuity to recognize that that surgeon is, is extremely reliant and, and on your mentor, and your former soccer coach, which I love that he came from sports, and and we'll talk about that in a second. Sure. Uh, but but that's a, that's incredible, and to serve that role to help that patient. I mentioned patients, and I've been doing this long enough to know that it has to be about the patient. They are at the center of the wheel, right? Yeah. And we're all just spoked on that wheel, so to yeah. speak. 
the patient centric way, which is embedded into our mission is the only way. And it's, it just, it's great to connect with other like-minded individuals like yourself, Shannon, that, that have that same mentality. Yeah. Well, I, so thank you for I, sharing. No, I appreciate that. I think that if your mentality is not patient focused, you'll be exposed at some point in this industry, right? That, that's, that's just my mentality. And, you know, the, the reason why you are able to develop a career in this industry is because of trust, right? right. And, and our surgeons, their, their entire focus is their patients and their practice. So um, the way that you're able to gain traction and gain business in this, in this industry is the surgeons will trust you uh, to be a part of their surgical team um, you, you know, and to, and to help them with their patients. So it has it, to be patient first. It has to be patient first. And therein lies the, the, a challenge for many because with trust comes commitment and yeah. you have to earn that trust. Sometimes it takes years. Sometimes it's, it's not, let me back up a second. Trust takes years to build and seconds to destroy. And for sure. sometimes when you get to the stage where you have other people working with you, whether it be associates or clinical specialists or enabling technology individuals, they are a representative of you and your brand as it relates to the rep or the interoperative consultant in the room. And so it's very critical and very important for people to understand that this is a big time commitment. Trust is hard to build. Relationships are hard to keep in a very competitive space like medical device sales, particularly in spinal robotics. Yeah, this isn't a this isn't a job. This isn't a career. This is a lifestyle, right? And and you become a part of that surgical team. You become a protector of your of your surgeons, your, your the staff. You want to protect them from from the noise of industry, from the noise of people that you're not sure you can trust, right? So, um, you know, that, beco that becomes a part of the process for sure. Did, did you ever have any difficulty? So fast forward to when, you, you know, you have your own dirt. Did you ever have any difficulty establishing relationships or that trust that, that, that we know is so important? I, I don't know if I ever had challenges with the trust part. The relationships that, you know, it's, we're, everybody's human. You're always going to have some people that, uh, interact with you better than others. Um, you know, th this industry is competitive, right? Um, we have a number of people that are similar to me that are vying for the trust of, of our clients. And some may have a leg up above me or, or somebody else. And, um, you know, that's just the way of the world. But in terms of trust, I, I don't, I, I certainly hope that, you know, surgeon customers uh, always trusted me, right? That was, that was really, that's my brand and that's my bread and butter is that I'm always gonna tell the truth. Even if my product may not be the best solution, I will tell my customers that and that develops that trust over time. That's exactly right. Because it's about the patient. Yes. Not about you or I, or the company that we represent. That's right. No, that's beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. Let's, let's move into your new role. And I'm interested to hear about that because having left a sales rep role into, into sales leadership and management myself, you know, I have a path, but everybody's path is different. So walk yeah. me through, uh, you, you spent some time in the ambulatory surgery space, and then now you're, you're managing a team. Walk, walk the audience through, you know, sure. how that went and, and, and what you've learned. Yeah. So I was, you know, uh, at, at one point in my career, I actually left Medtronic and started my own business. I was a distributor. I distributed spinal implants. Um, you know, I, I look at my career and I, I think about it as um, different opportunities to, to develop different skill sets, right? So as a distributor principal, I, I had to learn how to run a business. I had to learn contracting. I had to learn all these little things that Medtronic would take care of in the background um, that, that some folks aren't aware of. And frankly, I had to learn how to sell. <laughs> Right, because um, there's a there's a there's a large benefit to having big blue on your back. Uh, you know, you get instant credibility um, yeah. if you're hired by Medtronic, frankly. And um, you know, as a distributor, I was kind of a lone wolf out there, and I was 
you know, working with some smaller companies and I had to le really learn how to, to sell, right? Like that was my training ground. Um, and I left Medtronic under great circumstances. So I was fortunate enough to be asked to come back and I, I came back and, um, you know, once I came back, it was easy for me because I had the best technology in the world. I had uh, awesome support and, and leadership. So um, once I came back, it, it seemed like a, a very simple task, um, you know, ahead of me. I'm grinning, man, ear to ear, because it's eerily similar to my, my own path. If, if I may, I, I spent a couple of years, my first two years as an associate for Medtronic and uh, left for Nuvasiv, spent seven years there, left on, I would say, decent terms. Some may yeah. argue that, but <laughs> they, 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 they did hire me back in, in a leadership role. And I 100% agree with you. You mentioned something about credibility with the name and the brand of Big Blue or of any big company. Yeah. Uh, that is a great thing, but it can also be a crutch. Yes. Right. And what I'm, what I mean by that is you can't rely just on the brand because if any, if you've done any sort of studying of the sales process or listening to any of my silly videos on LinkedIn, uh, people buy you, they buy from you and you oh, yeah. have to learn how to develop yourself as a salesperson, as a rep in the room or whatever role you're in. And you know, I think that you learned that during your distributor days. I learned how to do that during early Nuva days. And I draw from that every single day. Now, as I'm trying to lead and compel others, both internal to our organization, as well as certain facing reps in the field and, and their managers, how we can grow a market share. Yeah. Because and, we're and at a critical crossroads. We are for sure. And I honestly, I, I think that my experience leaving Medtronic, it's made me more, more valuable to the, to the organization, right? Like those experiences make you, um, you know, a more, uh, give you a more diverse skill set. So, you know, leaving Medtronic, I think it was one of the best things that I could have done because I came back as a different person. And then, you know, I had some success in that sales rep role. And then I, I made a transition to, you know, our, our ASC business and kind of developing that strategy, which gave me some new muscles and different muscles than I had before. Right. Um, and, and so the transition to the, my current role as a, as a district sales manager was, it's been very, it's, it's new to me still. Right. But right. it's been really simple and it, it feels just very natural and easy to me um, because I've had all these different diverse um, uh, opportunities to right. learn different things and, and bring that to this to this role. So the transition for me has been awesome. I have a fantastic team. Uh, we're always looking to to grow and and, and find a new talent. But but I'm so pleased with with the team that I have. They've embraced me with open arms. Um, so so that transition has been easy for me because I it, it's not me going straight from an individual contributor role to a manager role. I had a, a you know some time away. In right. a different role as well. Uh, so that transition has been really nice for me. That's great to hear. And, you know, one thing I wanted to, to clarify, I don't want anyone out there to, to think that you and I are advocating you need to leave the company in order to, <laughs> to, to get ahead. No. No. While, that were, while that was both of our paths, there are, are a lot of things underway that, I, that I'm focused on and working with our teams internally, as well as some third party to you know, dive into the build model and the development of our own people. Because I think mm -hmm. that's critical to our culture as we grow. And as we become more competitive, Jeff Martha, our CEO, talks about, and I know that's a license for guys like you and I to, to, to be aggressive and to, yeah. to go out there and, and, and do things a little bit differently, right? And think big, play small, be nimble. Yeah. Those are his words, Jeff's words, and, and I love them. I wrote them down when he said them, and I'll never forget them. It, I, I feel that the Medtronic today, and I'd love to get your, your take on this, is completely different than the Medtronic that I left in 2010. What are your, what are yeah. your thoughts? Yeah, so I left in 2012, right? So I, I, my presumption is that we both had that, those same feelings um, about the organization, which is partly why we left, right? We were just... I just I feel like Medtronic has all the resources and the capabilities to to really be impactful and 
at one point it just didn't feel like we were going in the right direction, right? Um, right. Now I, I feel very different. And I tell a lot of people that, I tell the people that I work with, <clears throat> excuse me, that, you know, this is the most exciting time, you know, of my career within the organization, right? Stay we here. are, we're at the precipice of really turning, turning the corner and becoming a medical technology company. I've been saying this for quite some time to, you know, to my customers that I don't, you know, we don't, I don't, I'm not really in, into selling widgets to you. I'm right. into selling an entire suite of technology uh, applications to you. And we are really aggressively moving in that direction. And that's exciting to me. It is. And you mentioned something, you know, I feel like we, and, and I've actually heard our, our leadership use this exact phrase within, in, in certain, certain meetings that I was fortunate enough to be a part of. We were playing defense. Yes. We were sitting back and losing share. I mean, and you're an athlete, as am I, and you, you, you know what happens when you don't, when you change the way you play a game, different results will happen. So if you try to protect the lead, likely going to get scored on. And yeah, exactly. now we're playing offense. We're being aggressive. The yeah. acquisitions of the Zor Robotics, of Titan Spine and the nanotechnology, and most recently of Metacrea are three huge investments in the C for CST, our cranial and spinal technologies division, in a very short period of time. And yeah. so that's Jeff Martha, Brett Wall, Jacob Hall, our leadership playing offense, being aggressive, and wanting to take share that we feel we can help our surgeon customers, as you said, sure. utilize this new suite of technology, again, to treat the patient better. Yeah, and Jay, I, I, I have a couple of my team members call me today, and I always tell these guys, you know, it's our responsibility to push the organization, right? If we're, if we are complacent and and happy with everything, then we're not, I don't think we're doing what we should be doing. We have a responsibility as an organization to be better and to really push this industry. So um, yeah, I, I completely agree with you. I'm so happy with what our leadership team is doing. You know, Carlton Weatherby is, is, is in charge of, of our spinal business as well now, which is, you know, just provides a different dynamic. Um, so I, I just couldn't be more excited for where we're going. I can't imagine what the next five years is going to, is going to look like, but this is just, this is going to be fun. It is. It, it, yeah. And you mentioned Carlton. I, I, I could not be more excited about his leadership as our VP and GM and Linnea, right? They're both taking us into the next level of where we need to go in terms of our, our vision, our products, our messaging as a company, yeah. as an organization. And uh, I'm thrilled to be a part of it and have a seat at the table. So yeah, likewise. Let's talk, man. I, I just I got to dig into the athletics piece, and mm -hmm. not to not to be or sound like a jock, but there's a reason. And I've got a video that I'll, I'll maybe launching one day soon <laughs> that I uh, that that I talk about this. But there's a reason why military and athletics. Excuse me, I'm not. There is a reason why military and athletes find themselves into this specific space of, of orthopedics and medical device sales. And my thought is it to be an athlete and you were at a high level D1 soccer captain of, 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 of the soccer team. Yeah. So um, what's that? Yeah, I was I was lucky there. <laughs> I mean, but that's a big responsibility and that's leadership. And these, whether it's military or athletic, these people are able to compartmentalize, right? And multitask in the midst of the fire, whether it's the game or war, right? Real things that are happening. And that is tra a translatable skill. Can you, can you talk about that a little bit? Because I didn't sure. play D1 ball. I'd yeah. love to hear your thoughts on, do you draw from those experiences today? And or just maybe oh, yeah. help us understand that a little bit. Yeah, no, absolutely. Like uh, sports has been formative for me in my entire life, right? Like, you know, I've played in team sports my entire life. So having a team dynamic is natural to me. Right. Um, you know, the challenges that I experienced even in college, you know, that, that builds some scar tissue and some resilience, right? So I think sales specifically is a, 
is a is a tough field, right? You yeah. have to have a lot of resilience to get up every morning and get back out there to be told no. <laughs> that's right. And um, I think you know that resilience that's been built up in me from my sporting time, the competitive nature that I have in me, uh, super important, um, you know, with me choosing this career, right? I, I heard about, I started doing my research on, on the career uh, once I was uh, start, started to get brought into, uh, into the picture there. Mm-hmm. And I knew it was a competitive, competitive career. I knew it was hard. I knew there, you, it, it could be rewarding, but right when I knew how tough it was, I wanted in. Right. I wanted to prove something to other people and be in the toughest career um, at, at the biggest, best company in right. the best division at the time. That, that, that's where that's where I want to be. <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And look, I I have so many thoughts and so many different uh, places. I mean, we I feel like we could talk for hours. Unfortunately, yeah. we both have jobs to do. There's there's hard <laughs> stops. As I wrote about in my blog this morning, right? There's hard stops, and uh, we 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 got other things to get to. So, in the interest of the next uh, 20 minutes or so, what do you see? You mentioned, uh, you know, becoming a medical technology company at the forefront of that. Or what do you? What are the trends? What are the trends that you see? Whether it's robotics or navigation, still a very, in my opinion. Uh, enabling and, and, and awesome piece of technology that we, that we own. Where, where, where do you see trends? I mean, where, if we were to sit down at in three years from now, yeah. what is, what does surgery look like? What are surgeons interested in? Kind of walk me through your thought process. Yeah. I, well, I will say that we're certainly moving more towards the digital age of surgery and, you know, uh, we, we are going to be tech focused. We, you know, medical technology and, Medical devices, in uh, in particular, has not really had the opportunity to 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 get the Silicon Valley effect yet, and I think that's where we're going. And and with that being said, I think it would it will allow for a different person and different skill set to be involved in this industry. We need different minds and different people than than have traditionally been involved in in the business. Um, so I think that's where we're going, right? So uh, maybe a guy like me. Um, there's a place for me, but there's also a place for somebody else that has a different level of skill, uh, skill and understands coding and technology, right. and things like that, that can also be a salesperson. I think that's where, you know, I would like to see us go and, and just have a different diversity of experience uh, within our business. That's where we're going. I love it. I think you're spot on. And, and what's interesting for me in this new role, oh, I, I, get, I get pitched a lot from these companies that are wanting to work with Medtronic in some way, shape, or form. Sure. And, uh, you know, as, as, as I see it, you're, you're 100% right. There's going to be disruption, continued disruption to our processes and our own internal workflows and yeah. how we work together as industry and how industry is going to merge with the treatment options and the technology that exists today to help those patients treat their, to help those surgeons treat their patients in yeah. new and innovative ways. I mean, and the, and the surgeons want it too, Jay, right? The surgeons are, are tech savvy and, you know, they want, we want better outcomes for the patients. So I think technology can get us there. Big data can, can make us better, much better informed about the decisions that we make. So it's it's incumbent upon us to harness that data and harness the technology to make our products and our solutions better. That's that's just that's our responsibility again. Yeah, I agree. What 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 else? Is there anything else you'd like to talk about? I mean, I've got a ton of questions and thoughts, but but this is this is my time with Shane, and I wanted to be <laughs> we you got everything you wanted to say out there on the. On, yeah, on, no, on no, I would just say that, you know, I'm, I, you know, this is my, I'm in a new leadership uh, role uh, within the organization. Frankly, I, I, I'm, I've been a leader my entire life. I'm just so fortunate and happy to, to have the team that I have. I, I, I mean, I literally love these people. It's only been a, a couple of weeks here, but, you know, a lot of them I've known uh, throughout my career from a distance, but it's been so awesome to to really take on that mantle as a, as a leader within the organization. 
And um, yeah, I'm just so excited for the future of the company. I just, this is just, it, it couldn't be a better place to be. And I know a lot, a lot of other folks want to be uh, within this company. And, and I know you're going to, you're, you're helping to work on some of that as well. Yes, sir. Uh, but, but yeah, I just can't reiterate how exciting it is for us to literally be in a time where spine is changing, right? Orthopedics is changing with digital surgery and technology that we just haven't harnessed in the past. So I'm, I'm just excited. I, I mean, we can talk about a lot of different things, but um, uh, where Medtronic is going, not just from a technological standpoint, but also a cultural shift is, is going to be massive. Yeah, the cultural shift has been an interesting one, right? I mean, Jeff Martha's talked about that. We've gone through a restructure. There's some still some moving parts. Yeah. As I look to the landscape, I'm excited about how we're working with surgeon customers in new ways, right? And we talked about business travel picking up. I am really excited about a future spine leaders course, which yeah. is fast approaching. I think we're about a month out. Have you been hearing a lot of buzz in, 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 in your marketplace? I mean, it is in Florida, so. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, the, with the pandemic sort of settling down and, you know, uh, access to vaccines, people are excited to, to get back to it. But, you know, we've also, throughout this process, we are nimble enough to figure out different ways to engage with the customers, right? So we were able to, you know, Zoom is now a thing and it's not just a thing, it's a prominent thing. Uh, you know, also different technologies to, to do remote learning. So we were able to, to be as nimble as we needed to be uh, at the time. So I, I look, I think that uh, in-person is awesome, but I think because we have these digital technologies, we can engage with more people and, and really spread the message around the world, which is great, right? It's great for everybody. We don't have to be there in order Absolutely. to engage properly. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be interesting. Like I, I completely agree with you. Like I don't, there's so much efficiency gain from, and, and the technologies there, whether it be you know, just being able to talk like this on Zoom or just, just yep. the ability to share screens and presentations and, and uh, you know, whether it be Teams or whatever you're using to collaborate Google. Yep. It, it, it's just such a, a, an interesting time um, where we, we have all these tools and all these great things to help us be the most effective and, and grow together. And I think and we, were, you're right. we were forced to do Jay, right? We were forced to do this. But yes. I think it was, you know, it was a good thing because would we would we be as dynamic with Zoom and some of these technologies and virtual reality and some of these AR trainings? Would we be able to do that, or would we have forced ourselves to go there uh, if it weren't for the pandemic? I don't, I don't know. Yeah, but I'm I, happy we we've made a change. I don't want to go back, like as Jeff would say, I don't want to go get back to where we were. No, I don't think <laughs> we can. And I think you know it's been interesting, like from the hiring aspect, right? And you know, I, I was a hiring manager for the Western U.S. for the last couple of years, and you know, I hired two people during a pandemic. Never met them. Just felt yeah. like I knew them based on Zoom. And I was talking to one of my good friends in software, and he hired three hundred people. Wow. Just think about the difference. So companies have adapted. Yep. adopted this new way of communication and yep. I long for the days of regional sales meetings national sales meetings I do for think sure. we will get back to those because it's extremely important as you know to you know be there in person there's nothing the efficiency gain is great but it doesn't replace the face-to-face -face, right it no, never will sure. I think where where we are now is we're going to find a happy medium and a balance yeah. between the two yeah for sure absolutely well man i i certainly uh have enjoyed our conversation uh you know if, if people want to find you and 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 learn more about shannon you know wh where would you where would you direct them where would you say uh, link, linkedin's probably the best uh medium to, to find me my name's shannon mays m-a-y-s uh you'll find me on there i'm, I'm fairly active on linkedin so that's probably the best place to find me. Reach out. I'm happy to provide any guidance or any assistance. Uh, do your homework, as as Jay and I would say, right? Um, you know, also do your research. It's it's a this is a hard and challenging field to be in. Everybody from you know Zimmer Biomed, uh, Medtronic, Abbott, Nuvasiv, Johnson and Johnson. Everybody that's within these within those walls has worked really hard to get there. They've done their research and. You know, nobody is is finding jobs for them. You've got to do it yourself and and really get out there and work. Um, 
so yeah, I, I'm happy to provide any guidance. Um, but again, do your do your due diligence in your work first for sure. Absolutely. I, I couldn't agree more. I mean, you know, I, I say that a lot, but but it's very true. Um, I've spent some time with some individuals that haven't prepared. And when I compare that to, to the time that I spend with individuals that have prepared and yeah. know why they want to do this and know Medtronic or whatever company that they're interested in, those, those conversations go a lot differently. And the follow-up and the potential opportunity is night and day. Yeah. So it becomes a filter, cool. honestly, right? Like yep. if you come prepared, it's just like, if if I if you're not prepared for this conversation, how would you ever be prepared to have a conversation with a clinician? <laughs> right? Exactly. So, yeah, I think it becomes a filter, unfortunately, for people. No, I get it. And look, people are looking for guidance and direction. It's just bandwidth becomes a challenge. You and I yep. have full time jobs, families, and things like that. And so, you know, at the end of the day, happy to point somebody in the right direction, but this is a difficult industry to break into. Again, I don't know why they're it needs to be a robbery. This is, <laughs> it's not something that people need to think about breaking into, although it might be difficult if yeah. you do your homework, if you do your research and you know exactly what you want to do and why you want to do it, right. then I encourage you to apply, right? We have a great career website, a portal that has all our available jobs. I'm not the guy to guide you to do those things, right? I'm not right. going to teach you how to do the homework or the yeah. research. But if you're a spine rep and you have experience in this industry, you're the those guy. are the people that I'm interested in talking to. And Shannon, I got to tell you, just in this last, let's call it two month period, I've had so many great discussions with people just like you and I, yeah. who are like-minded, patient-centric focused, develop the territory and, and, and are in a good place with their company. But Right. They're intrigued or they're excited about the same momentum that you and I saw that caused us to come back to Medtronic and sure. could not be happier to be, you know, a person to introduce the new Medtronic to our competition, quite frankly, Absolutely. because if everything works the way that, that, that you and I think that it will and that Jeff is leading us towards, we're going to need more people. We're going to need a lot more help. Yeah, for sure. And even, you know, those folks that are looking at Medtronic, uh, whether they're in the industry outside, you know, I, all I can reiterate is, you know, continue to, to diversify your skill set, right? Show up with different skills and different, uh, different ways of doing things. That, that's how you separate yourself from other candidates, right? right. And, and, and even, uh, you know, our movement to, to this med tech world where a lot of other companies are are, are taking that that jump into med tech. We need different people with different skill sets. So, um, you know, don't be afraid to, to continue to learn. That's, that's the only way you survive in this industry is that you continue to learn and develop yourself and, and don't, uh, don't fear becoming a different person. If you were the, the person that, that stayed away from technology in the past, you can change that tomorrow, right? And really embrace it. Um, so that, that's, that's what I would leave you with is, is continue to learn, diversify your skill set, and and there's there's always going to be a place for you in this industry. Well said, you know. And, and to wrap up, take any opportunity to learn, right? I, I know of a, of a colleague of mine, good friend, who spent two years unpaid interning for an orthopedics company just to shadow the rep. This is back before vendor credentialing. He was in the hospital. He was watching, observing cases, shadowing them turning over trays, doing all the grunt work just wow. to learn. Wow. And you think about that level of commitment. So he was juggling two jobs just to, just to get, get in. And you, know, you talk to different people who go, whether it be, I, I spent four years at IBM getting sales experience, B2B sales experience. It doesn't really matter, but I had sales experience that I was able to apply to this industry. And everybody's path is going to be unique and different. But what I'll, what I'll, what I'll leave the audience with is, just gain knowledge and be a sponge in whatever capacity that is. Take it, it, you're, you may not get that dream job right out the gates, but what you're going to get is the knowledge and the experience that you could then apply and leverage to that career and that, that job that ultimately you, you're looking for. Absolutely. Yeah. Couldn't agree more. Well, hey, brother, great to see you. Great Look to see forward you, to shaking your hand in person. And uh, Likewise. we will... Uh, 
We'll talk again soon. Thanks again for joining Thanks, Sultans of Spine. This has been Coffee with a Closer, Shannon Mays, M-A-Y-S, out of Florida. Look him up on LinkedIn. Follow what he's doing. He's going to do some amazing things for this company <laughs> in the very near future. Already is. Thanks again, Shannon. Thank See you, ya. brother. Appreciate you.